Hey guys, this episode we're going to be talking about the difference between Link 2 and Button 2 in Rails. So here I'm going to log in, and I've built this application using the free Jumpstart template. Uh, and I modified the nav bar here to have two logout buttons. If we inspect these in the browser, you'll see one is an anchor tag, which is a link to, and one is a form that has a button inside of it for logout, and that's the second one. And both of these will allow us to log out. So we can click the link, it's going to log us out. If we log back in, we can then click on the second one, which is the button in the form, the button two, it also logs us out. So what's the difference and why would we use one or the other for our application in different ways? Well, the reason is uh, that the anchor tag is actually using JavaScript to submit this delete request. And any anchor tag, the link to's, that will generate an anchor tag in the browser, any of those are going to always, always use a get request. A link is a link to another page. So the browser does not expect you to submit this with a delete request. Any anchors will always be a get. Here, we're using Turbo to intercept that and transform it into a delete request so that we can display it as, render it as an anchor tag, but intercept it and really use JavaScript to make a delete request. In the case of the form, the form is just going to simply make a delete request to the server. And the way Rails does that for backwards compatibility, it actually uses a post request with a hidden underscore method uh, delete value. So this is going to tell Rails, hey, when you receive this post request, it's really a delete request. Um, and that's for backwards compatibility compatibility with old browsers. Uh, but this is the proper way to do this. So when we are making any request that's not a get request, we want to use a form and a button to to make that uh, request because that's what your browser wants. A form it allows you to set the method, which can be post, put, patch, delete, um, all of those are things that the browser wants you to do in a form. So when we're using the anchor tag and using JavaScript to intercept this, the actual behind the scenes magic is this is creating a form uh, hidden on the page and submitting it to make the delete request. So you're actually creating this dynamically with JavaScript when you could have just used a form to with zero JavaScript. So let's actually take a look at this. We can go into the source for Turbo and we can put a, um, we can put a breakpoint in here, and you'll see that in this method where I've found, we have a form link click observer, and this is going to be generating the form and appending it to the body of the page, and then it's going to submit the form, and it will use this submit end uh, event listener to actually remove the form when it's done. So if we were to go here and click this log out, which is the anchor tag, it is going to pause here. If we go to elements, we'll see at the very bottom of the page, we now have a form with data turbo is true. The action is the same URL that the browser, uh, or the, the anchor tag had listed. And then it has hidden on the form as well as method delete. So when you're doing an anchor tag with a data turbo method, it's generating forms and submitting them behind the scenes for you. So if you've ever wondered how that JavaScript works, it's exactly this right here. Look up the form link click observer in the Turbo repository on GitHub. You'll find this code and you'll see that once it's followed the link, it's going to then generate the form, add the attributes to it, and then it's going to submit the form after it appends it to the page. So really, we can skip all of that all of that stuff and just immediately use a form itself right in place. So let me go ahead and resume that. And while we're here, maybe we'll go ahead and remove this breakpoint. There we go. And now we can, you know, use this like normal. But this is important because what we're doing in both cases actually is creating a form. So you should default to using button to as much as possible, creating forms like this is uh, the right way the browser expects you to do it. This is also the same reason why if you have a create or update action and you have if, you know, if uh, announcement 
dot save else render new status unprocessable entity is now required. Uh, we want to follow the rules that the browser and HTTP spec uh, tells us to follow. So in the past, all of our uh, resources, like our scaffolds um, in Rails, all of our controllers just rendered new, and that told the browser it was 200 okay. But now that we use Turbo, the JavaScript uses fetch in the browser, and it says, wait a minute, uh, there was an error, but you said it was okay, but there was, there was actually some issue with that uh, submission. So we were, for years, the whole Rails community was not adding the status uh, correctly on error responses. So now we do, and the Turbo JavaScript knows how to interpret that properly and re-render the HTML that we sent back. So it's important for us to follow the rules and understand what's possible in the browser uh, in order to you know write good Rails applications. So. This is, seems minor, and you could put an anchor tag, of course, but you should use a button to instead, or a form with a button inside of it that you create with form with. Now, um, so this is basically the wrong way to do it. It's just kind of what we've done in the past, and you know that's the way we have done it, but it's much more important for us to start writing better Rails applications following the rules of the browser, and it will have a much better time. So button to log out is a better way of doing that, and you can use CSS to style these just like you normally would. Okay, Chris, so we'll use button twos everywhere now instead of link twos with a data turbo method on it. Makes sense. However, there are some situations where we can't do that. Let's take a look at an example. Let's imagine we have a form with a uh, model is like a blog post. Let's imagine we have a blog post form. And we want to have two buttons in it. We have a form dot submit, uh, which is going to like save the changes. And we might also want a button to uh, publish automatically. So this would be to like a publish blog post path and we put the blog post in there. Uh, if we were to do that, we cannot actually uh, use this button to inside of our form. Reason why is because our um, publish action here is gonna generate a form inside of a form and the browser is going to receive that HTML with a nested form and it's just gonna remove that nested form, but leave the button inside of it. So this button would actually submit the parent form because this button's form would get removed automatically by the browser. So that is a case where you could change this to a link to and have method data turbo method patch to make the patch request here. Uh, we Our button two should have had the method of patch on it, but um, you get the picture. So link to would allow us to do this because it would generate a form that's appended to the body of the page and then patches that blog post uh, to be published. So that would work, but the other cool thing that we can do is we can use a button tag for publish and we can give this a form attribute and this can be the ID of the publish form and we could have a form with model at blog post, and this URL would go to the publish blog post path with our blog post. Uh, form, and actually we're missing a do in this example, I'll just put that in there for clarity. Um, and we could give this form an ID of publish form and what would actually happen is that when you click this button, even though it's in a different form, it will actually submit this form. So you can put buttons on the page anywhere you would like, even outside of forms. So you can have these hidden forms on your page, just like the JavaScript does when we click a link to with turbo method. We could just put a, a visible form on the page somewhere else and have buttons that go and uh, submit those. So it's really awesome that uh, the browser actually knows that that's an issue that is potentially a problem and provides a way to address that. And here I pulled up the button tag on MDN, reference this uh, a lot, so you wanna take a look at this too. You can set buttons to be auto-focused and whatever, but the thing we care about is the form. So if you, 
add that attribute on there, the value of this attribute must be the ID of a form in the same document on the same page. So this is going to be how you can tell that form to do something there. And then you can also do some other really cool things. You can tell it to uh, submit that form as a post request or a delete request or something other than the default action that's on the form. So that is also another cool thing. You could use that to make a delete button that will submit a request to that form, but it will make a delete instead of a post or whatever you might want to override. So you can do that with, uh, or actually that's form method, uh, post and get for those, you can override that. Form action is the URL that you would send it to. So you could change that URL from the button itself, which is fascinating. Um, and then form encoding type, if you need to, you can also change that to be a form multi-part form or whatever, uh, if needed, but it's probably not as likely, but, um, you know, this is probably the most useful thing. Specifying which form allows you to do all of this really interesting, uh, form work and having buttons do different things without any JavaScript. And the browser knows that this is something people will want to do. So we've added these features and we just don't take advantage of them like we should. So I want to point this all out because a lot of people ask, you know, why uh, use a button to? Why are you not using a link to? We want it to look like a link. You can still do that with buttons uh, in CSS, style them to look like a link, and that is totally fine. But you will be in a much better web developer by understanding what the browser wants you to do and following those rules instead of going and doing them differently. So use link to's with turbo method delete uh, or any turbo method as little as possible. If you have to, fine. If it's easier to upgrade your application to use turbo by you know adding turbo method to existing links with old Rails UJS, by all means do that, but as you go, convert things over to button twos uh, as much as possible. So the forms in your browser can do a lot more than you thought, and we have a lot less reliance on JavaScript. Everything's going to work consistently uh, with or without our JavaScript being enabled, which is awesome. So that is just something small I wanted to mention uh, because it came up in our GoRails Discord, which if you're not a member, you should join. Uh, Go Rails uh, Discord is found at discord.gg slash go rails. So go find us on there and join us. Um, and it just came up because somebody was asking about, you know, links uh, to log out. And another question they had about method delete. Uh, what, why not just log out with a get request? Well, for security purposes, you should be the only one controlling your session. And if you make it a get request, Anybody could link you to that URL and log you out, which would be uh, not something you chose to do. So it's a bad thing to uh, make a log out a get request. You should always make it a delete request. And when you're doing the uh, button twos and the, the form that is generated by the JavaScript in Turbo, all of those are also going to include CSRF checks in that form. So it's even more secure so that only you uh, could have taken that action by being in that page in the browser and submitting your CSRF token with the delete request. So it's important to make sure for security reasons that all of those actions that change something on the server are uh, handled securely and not in get requests. They need to be in a post, a put, patch, or a delete. So that's another little tip that's important to, to mention. But that's it for this episode. If you have other questions about this stuff, let us know in the comments below and we'll happily answer those in another video. Until then, I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.